Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another edition of PD and P-Dubs Unscripted. It is great to be with you. We're recording today on Tuesday, April 25th, and PD, great to be with you again. Yeah, good to be with you on, you know, kind of a little chillier day, but better than yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah. Yesterday was nice and sunny, um, but today was pretty good. It was nice, yeah. Yeah, and you know, exciting times for our beloved Bears coming up with draft on Thursday mm-hmm. evening. A lot of different options of what they could do. It will be interesting to see what happens. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people got their eyes and ears tuned into all that that's going on there. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, we wanted to just uh, talk today about the pastor draft the coming pastor up. The pastor draft, yeah. See, I was it, trying to connect that there. Yeah, it's funny you say that because. Uh, uh, one of my buddies in Fort Wayne, when I uh, got my call, I was in my my uh, ecclesial shirt with my collar at my home, and I was on the phone with I think Emmanuel. It was after the call service, and uh, ooh, like when they call. Oh, I see what you're. Yeah, getting. yeah. So uh, he took a picture, and he goes, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Elect Warren Schilf on the phone with his. Uh, as a draft choice of the 2010 pastoral call from Emmanuel. And uh, it was kind of funny. You know, it was like one of those where you see the, the athlete talking to the team. team. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean, I mean, so it's not just St. Louis, but I think all of past seminary students kind of make that joke. It's like a draft mm-hmm. and yeah. you know, some guys know where they're going. Right, right. Some it's up in the air. Complete surprise and... But yeah, and I was showing you beforehand, and like, so we're just going to kind of talk about call day since Fort Wayne had their vicarage call service last, last yeah, night, yeah. and tonight, when we're the day recording, it is uh, their regular calls mm-hmm. for placements, and then tomorrow, Concordia St. Louis has their call day, and they have both vicarage and the regular calls on the same day. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know, so we, we had a tradition, my group of friends are now showing that to P-Dubs beforehand. We did both before Vicarage and before our regular calls, but are playing rock bands in our ecclesial shirts. <laughs> and so, like, I know the one is on YouTube, I th- or one is on Facebook. I thought they both were, and especially on YouTube. But so for Vicarage, it was my same friends. It was Scotty, who we've had on the podcast. He's my friend in Ukraine. Then Matt, and then Jake. And Jake and Matt have both been on Gathering Place as ho- their special guest hosts. But, you know, so before our call day for Vicarage, we rocked out to more than a feeling. Ooh, Boston. Some Boston Love there. that. And there's some long holds there. Scotty had to hold his voice. I was going to say, those are high octaves. Uh, high octaves and some long hold standing notes that he had to sing out to. Uh-huh. And then for our regular call day for the fourth year, it was uh, Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> and so <laughs> so nothing beats seeing a bunch of soon-to-be pastor Lex in their collars, yeah. rocking out to Ozzy Osbourne well, in the dorm room. I got to tell you, if for those who uh, haven't seen it, I mean, PD was uh, he was slapping the bass uh, like big time and pretty like, serious, very serious, uh, typical bass guy, you know, just like serious into his craft. And then uh, there were a couple times where he was he was going like crazy. He's like leaning back, arching that back. Well, you got to get that whatever that was in rock band to get like the like special like power or whatever for that yeah, little yeah. bit when you got to like lift the neck of the guitar uh-huh. up. <laughs> I had forgotten about that actually. Ugh. Yeah, we actually had a, a rock band group that we would go out to a buddy's place. Um, the place where he lived was in the country and uh, he had a big barn. And so up top of the barn was a nice room and it had all the media equipment and everything. And we had rock band portraying on this big white wall and great speakers and so yeah we would go rock band uh quite often out out into the farming land <laughs> yeah that was a lot our second year at sem when scotty was my next door neighbor in the dorms mm-hmm. and then that fourth year not as much but he had an on-campus apartment but i remember the first year matt's little brother nick recorded us and then that fourth year we had to figure out how are we going to set up the camera to record ourselves yeah yeah yeah, that's funny. You guys did a great job, and uh, it's a great video to yeah. watch. But so, yeah, uh, did you have any traditions? Did you guys have a tradition for those two years of call services? No, we didn't. We didn't really. Um, not that I can remember. Uh, we just kind of came and did the thing. And but uh, but uh, yeah, it was it was an exciting time, and that's what you know. Every year, spring comes along, and uh, you know you hear about another group of men. And deaconesses uh, getting sent out to uh, their assignments or their vicarages and internships. And uh, it's an exciting time. Uh, P. 
people just uh, not knowing where they're going to go, you know, yeah. like you said, some might. Um, but, uh, yeah, even even for those who know, you know, it's, it's still, still exciting. exciting. Yeah. And, you know, especially for your assignment, like your fourth year, when you get the official call papers and mm-hmm. the, is it, do you get the diploma of vac- vocation, I believe? That yeah, yeah. Talks about what you'll be doing mm-hmm. and all the... Yeah, Other. all the details of the of the call, yep, and the areas of responsibility and all of that. And uh yeah, that was uh everybody had their packets after the service and uh couldn't look at them until after the service is right. what we were told. Yeah, like I still remember on Vicarage, the Vicarage call service, like as soon as like I remember in like, you know, being me being towards the beginning of the alphabet with A, I think I was like the seventh in my year both times. But I remember, like, getting back into the pew and seeing, like, everybody in the pew just on their cell phones texting people. Mm. I don't remember seeing that much for, like, fourth-year placement. Yeah. Maybe we were like, oh, maybe we got to look a little more respectable Yeah, there. right. Yeah, we're but actually sh- getting a call here. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, so, um, yeah, you know, for vicarage, for me, uh, I was blessed to do a local vicarage in Fort Wayne because I had a family of four kids and... uh So the church where I was the field worker and where my children went to school and where we worship, uh, for the first time in their history, they... They agreed to have me as their vicar, and they uh, must have really liked you. No, not not surprising. Well, it was very wonderful, and because I, I had asked the senior pastor if he would consider it, and he's like, "Well, I can't think of a reason why I wouldn't ask." And so it all went through, and so we didn't have to move our family, which was a tremendous blessing. And you know, um, they they couldn't pay me much, and because it was like an unbudgeted thing, and. I said, you know what, I don't need much because I'm staying in my home and I don't have to up and move my family and incur many other costs. And uh, my wife doesn't have to get another job, which she already had a job there. So there were benefits. Um, So I got paid very, very little. I don't want to say how much, but it was very little. But it, it didn't matter. I was grateful to be still, you know, my family had some continuity. Right. So yeah, and so I did my vicarage in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, mm-hmm. and so that was you know kind of cool. Never been to Oklahoma at that point, and you know, and for those not familiar with Bartlesville, it's the headquarters of Conoco Phillips. Mm-hmm. So that's where Phillips was from, and then when they merged with Conoco, it was that early two thousands. All the people from Ponca came all the way over, and so and I lived in the parsonage right next door to the church, mm. which was, so here, you know, I'm trying, so here's like, I'm showing P-Dubs here some pictures. So that oh, was the that's front, a nice house. That was the front of it. There's a front with my dad's car. There's the church, mm-hmm. back side, backyard. Yeah. You know, that's really and, nice. And it was nice when they cut the grass for the church, they'd cut my grass. Wow. Look and, at you. You didn't even have to cut your grass. You know, fully furnished. There's me and my dad watching TV there in the family room. Oh, wow. But yeah, so I mean, I lucked out there that I had a fully furnished house to move into mm-hmm. with a piano in there. And I bet you were like hitting the keys all the time. <laughs> oh, huh? yeah. You know, walking around the house, I just hit the keys. Yeah, that's a big family room. Very nice. Yeah, so that was fireplace, nice. fireplace, kitchen, grill, and the front door there. But yeah, so that was, I mean, that was a nice thing that I had to try to find a place to stay. Mm hmm. It was nice that I could just walk to church every day, mm-hmm. and then especially if I came in the back way, then I had to rush up the stairs because we had a security system that had to go like punch in the code. Oh, okay. Or even when I was the last one to leave, you know, punch in the code to lock it. Yeah, yeah. And so, but yeah, it's so a little bit different living down in Oklahoma. Well, I've never been there, so. So yeah, and Bartlesville is about forty miles north, kind of of Tulsa, and so mm-hmm. a little bit different living, but it was neat kind of experience because you know it was one of those. I don't know if I'll ever be back and. Oklahoma, so outside mm-hmm. of like doing like a lot with the youth ministry and just doing pastoral stuff, like I did get to go down to Oklahoma City a couple times. I went once for a Bulls Thunder game, mm-hmm. and then also I think when I went down for a conference in Edmond, Oklahoma, I was like, I'm just gonna go downtown and like in Oklahoma City because Edmond's near OKC and kind of like see where the bombing was, the memorial for the bombing yeah. downtown OKC, and, right? Right. Which was a really nice and moving memorial. Then when mom and dad came to pick me up, we I took them down there so they could see because they're like, who knows if we're ever gonna be in Oklahoma right. again? Yeah, for sure. And so went to a couple OK State football games. 
And so, but it was a good experience. But I remember that excitement of like when you hear like, you know, for those that have never experienced that call day, it's like Donald Antor, mm-hmm. Redeemer Lutheran Church, Bartlesville, Oklahoma, Oklahoma District. Yeah, I yeah. think that was the order. That's, that's kind of exactly how it was. And it's yeah. just like, and it's like in your mind, it's just like, where is that in Oklahoma? Mm-hmm. I don't know much about Oklahoma. Yeah, except for college football. And then you go through the lines of shaking like. President Harrison's hand, President mm-hmm. Meyer, who was St. Louis's president at the time, mm-hmm. and the different faculty there. Right, right. It is, uh, you know, they do a really great job of making a big deal out of it because it is, and, you know, even for vicarages, and uh, because, you know, it's a year of your life and it's something new, brand new experience, whether it is traveling to a new s- state or city or even just uh, you staying know local. staying local and doing new things, new new responsibilities, and that was a big difference for me uh, between uh, the first part, which was uh, field work. I didn't really get to do much other than maybe read the scripture, okay. and um, I, I didn't. I think I got to preach once or twice during Lent on a midweek service, so I had fellow brothers who on their vicarages were preaching regularly on the weekend services. And I'm like, well, that's not what I'm able to do. But I also did a lot of visitation of Mm -hmm. people in hospitals, rehab centers. And so I had a really good mentoring pastor there for that. And then they would let me go on my own a lot of times. And uh, that was was cool. And then I did a lot with the youth. There was a youth... Uh, leader, and uh, so he and I would partner with an, another lay leader, and we had a great combo together, and enjoyed, you know, ministry with one another. So it was it was an awesome time of a vicarage. But you know, as I, as you can hear, I I got to do a lot more than just reading scripture. You know? Right, and, and they, yeah, I mean that's because I didn't have like obviously my field work wasn't Redeemer in Bartlesville, it was uh, Manual mm-hmm. in Washington, Missouri. But we didn't get to do as much there because I, I don't know if Fort Wayne had this, but we kind of, I think maybe both Sims had this, but you can only spend so many hours at your field work church. Right. And like your drive time counted in that. Mm. And our church was an hour away. So that's two hours drive time. Mm-hmm. And then we were there from like the eight o'clock service to when we got done at noon because we'd go to the second service, which was a 10, 10 30, whatever. So there's, Right there, you're getting your hours that whole, mm-hmm. just that one day. Yeah. So I think I only preached sure once or twice at field work my second year. But then Vicarage, like, you know, with, like I said, the youth and, like, two things that I think of, like, you know, talking about youth events, like, I remember I think it was, like, the first week they had a plan, like, we're going go-karting in town. Mm. So that was the first, like, youth event. Mm-hmm. And I still remember, like, being on, like, and this tells the times, like, AOL Instant Messenger. Oh, Yeah. And one of the youth that first week reached out to me and was like sharing, hey, I'm going through this difficult time. And it was like 10 o'clock at night. I'm like, here's where it's that real ministry of like yeah, right. somebody reaching out late at night like, hey, here's this is what's going on right now. Yeah, I'm struggling. Yeah, I had a similar thing. We had a pager like for this uh, 1-800-JESUS number. And uh, people would call it and, and prayer requests or you know need help, pastoral advice on my vicarage. And I remember one time I got a guy called me up at like two or three in the morning. And, uh, I was just like, Oh, my pager's going up. It wasn't a pager. It was a cell phone. Oh. So uh, I, uh, I picked it up and I'm like, hello, hello. And I missed the call. I'm like, Oh rats. I don't know. Well, then he called back and I'm like, hello. And he goes, do you got a word for me? And I'm like coming out of a sleep. And I'm like, do I have a, do I have a word? What do I, what do you mean? It hung up. I'm like, Oh man. Oh, what is going on? He means a word of God, stupid. You know, like say something. And uh, so then I tried calling him back, and he would pick up and hang up, pick up and hang up, and then finally I'm like, hey, don't hang up on me. And uh, well, we wound up having a conversation, and I just like I'm spewing out, you know, God's word. I go, I didn't know what you meant. So what's going on? Tell me what's right. going on, and then I'll give you a word. And uh, so you know, we probably talked for I don't know half an hour, and. Uh, but he was in a bad spot, and I, I then he just thanked me and hung up. You know, I'm like, I didn't know what to do. Right, it kind of catches you off guard that first time. Yeah, right. Yeah, another thing, thing of Vicarage, and thank God this has changed. But like, it felt like uh, the first like handful of people that I visited in the hospital died shortly after, like mm-hmm. in a, cu- a week or two after I visited them. Mm. I was like, 
am I the angel of death? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if I want to visit people anymore if they're just going to die because I'm just yeah. like, and my, my supervising pastor is like, hey, if I go in the hospital, don't come and see me. Yeah. And I was wow. Like, I'm like, got it, buddy. <laughs> not not going to come and see you because I don't want to see you die. That's funny. But it's just like, you know, like of all the odds of that happening, because mm-hmm. you think of all the visits I made over the years as a pastor, yep. obviously some have died, but it like have like the beginning part, like most of them all like pass away shortly after. It's just like, what am I doing here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, you're entering a whole new realm and things like that. And, and uh, so it's a great experience. So, yeah, the other thing I got to do was do a new member class, so which I do at Emmanuel and I enjoy. And so that was really interactive. And, um, but yeah, a lot of experiences on the, on more on the vicarage side of things. And, uh, yeah, like I really valued that vicarage year because mm-hmm. I feel I did more learning in that than in the classroom because you're doing the practical things. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why they do it your third year. So what happened, you can bring back to fourth year and say, hey, you know, this happened on Vicarage. Right. What's the best way to handle this? Because, I mean, that was the other thing that I think back to Vicarage, some of the, you know, maybe in almost like conflicts that might have come up with people in the congregation. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you know, I didn't mean to get this person offended. Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of learning, okay, this is how ministry would be that, you know, sometimes, you know, doesn't always work smoothly. Yeah. Yeah, there was, uh, yeah, you had those those uh, God-appointed learning moments. And, uh, yeah, there's a few that I remember, uh, you know, relationally with some members and things like that. But um, I liked it because, you know, maybe um, because I was kind of a known entity by my third year because I think field work was two years, right? Was it first and second year? Yeah, we did a little bit fourth year, but not yeah. as much. Right. And uh, so... You know, they got to know me, and so I felt like they gave me the freedom to kind of plug and play wherever I wanted, and, you know, I was just eager to help out wherever, and uh, so, you know, they gave me some areas, but, like, yeah, just uh, jump in. You know, it wasn't like, oh, stop, hold back, but it was just follow the leader and jump in, and it was fun. Yeah, because, like, you know, you were talking about preaching, I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to think. I was probably about once a month preaching, and mm. I remember, like, Writing the sermon, then giving it to my senior pastor, yeah, yeah, and going over with him. You would mark it up, and yeah, yep, yeah. I, even as a vicar, I didn't get to preach a whole lot. I mean, it was maybe just a couple more times than even on my two years of field work, and so, yeah, it was something. Yeah, it was once a once a year or once a month, and then I remember like Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, like we were supposed to have Doctor Lessing, who was. At the time, one of the professors at St. Louis mm-hmm. Seminary, he was going to preach Christmas Day because his in-laws were members at my church. Yeah. And Dr. Lessing likes to give me a hard time, which is all good. Yeah. And, like, Christmas Eve, we got, like, eight inches of snow. And mm. for Oklahoma, that's a lot of snow. Yeah. So we canceled Christmas Eve and Christmas Day services. I'm like... I'll never have a Christmas like that ever again. <laughs> yeah, right. And then and that day, and I flew home Christmas. I th- flew back to Chicago on Christmas Day, and like it was like a forty mile drive to Tulsa. And I saw like thirty cars in the ditches, and like cars were passing me. I was mm. like, "This is why you guys are in the ditch." Yeah, and I'm, I'm still just, on the road. Yep, right. I mean, I my car did get stuck in the snow at the airport and the upper level when I parked the car there, so that wasn't fun because I was just like, "I've never flown before." don't know what to do at the airport now my car's stuck in the snow i can't get it out what am i gonna do yeah i got nobody to call to help me thankfully somebody from the airport finally came by and got me free and got mm-hmm. in a parking spot and got th- through yeah you know that whole call night uh for for vicarage or your call did did your family come for the vicarage uh um, assignment night mom and dad came for both vicarage and okay good. placement yeah i think I think I just told my family, oh, don't worry about it. I'll call you where I'm assigned because I kind of knew that I would be going to Fort Wayne. and uh, But then it was kind of cool. Even even though I knew that it looked like I'd be coming to Emmanuel, I mean, I, I had interviews with the leaders of Emmanuel before call night. And so, but I always maintained like, and I had heard horror stories of people who said, you know, we had a guy, actually, I saw it firsthand one of our other field workers who was a year ahead of me at uh, where I served field work at Holy Cross, he was walking around going, yep, we know where we're going to be called. We know where we're going to be called, and we're going here, we're going here. Well, the night of the call, it was somewhere else. 
Ooh. And uh, it was a big shock. And I'll never forget the look on his face and his wife's face. And I'm like, you know, even though Emmanuel, you know, it seems like it's going to be Emmanuel, I'm like, I'm not going to just, I'm just going to wait till I hear the name, right. you know. And then, then I did. And so I was, you know, very pleased. And so, but yeah, my family came for my call night. Okay. Yeah. So that was... That was nice and celebratory. Yeah, that's always that like exciting time. I mean, I remember the pictures with mom and dad, and mm-hmm. and even like with that placement one, like you know that because there's always that nervousness. And I mean, I don't think as much maybe for our years, but you know, previous years, and you might have remember seeing this with older classes when you were there, saying like there might not be enough calls for everybody. Yeah. So there's always that like, mm-hmm. oh, I don't oh, I hope I don't hear placement pending or right. Right. It's just like oh man, that'd be so disheartening. Yeah. And I mean, and I knew like when I entered, when I was in my fourth year, I had like four or five different interviews with like four or five different churches. So I was like, you know, and I was talking to our placement director. I'm like, you know, should I be worried? You know, any, he's like, oh, don't worry, but I wouldn't buy a baseball hat. It might be an Astros hat or a Yankees hat. <laughs> and I was like, is he trying to give me a clue? Because yeah. I knew I interviewed with a church in Houston. I knew somebody asked about like Atlantic District stuff. So I was like, oh, is he trying to tell me that it might be one of those? Mm-hmm. And then it was Salem, Illinois. So I was like, Nope, I don't think a Houston hat or a yeah. Yankees hat would have made a difference there in Salem. Right, right. But it's still that, like, you know, and that was a nice experience. And, you know, hearing that, I remember going through that handshake line and President Meyer, he was like, I don't remember, I was shaking hands, like, something. He goes, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about, President Meyer. <laughs> and I love President Meyer, you know, yeah. like, bond with him with the old White Sox. But he was telling me that William Jennings Bryan was from Salem. Oh, okay. Are you familiar with him? Uh, I've heard of the name. I'm, I can't say He was a I dominant know. force in the Democratic Party in the late ni- or early 1900s, late 1800s, where he ran three times for president in ni- 1896, 1900, and 1908. Mm. So, yeah, so he was from there. Okay. So I was like, I don't know who he's talking about. And, I <laughs> and then, like... Yeah, you're all a bundle of nerves anyway Right, a bundle there. of nerves. And he's just like... <laughs> Spewing stuff He's got nothing to worry yeah, about. Yeah, does he care? But then it was funny because like, I remember sitting there in the pew like during call service. I don't remember what point it was, but I was like, man, that guy to the right, you know, or to like the pews because, you know, they have all the extra chairs set up in the sanctuary. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, man, that guy looks really familiar, but I just don't know where I've seen him. And then after the service, he comes up to me, and it was the senior pastor at Salem because oh. he came because it was like, a, you know, it's like an hour and a half drive, yeah, so it wasn't nice. that. So I'm pretty sure him and our, was it, I can't remember, it might have been our secretary, that came, mm-hmm. or maybe his wife, I can't remember. But I was like, that's why he looked familiar. I had an interview with him. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't on the interview. Yeah, there were some people who had that same experience. So uh, that was cool. One thing I did forget, like, um, there, my vicarage congregation was considering calling, they were kind of talking about calling me as an associate. And because the senior pastor was retiring... And they were trying to move an associate up to the senior, and all that was kind of going on at that time. And then there was another local church who uh, was just outside of Fort Wayne that was interested in me for youth pastor. So, you know, you hear these things, and you're like, well, well, I don't know. I mean, I did interview with Emmanuel, but, like, I would see what's going on with Emmanuel. I'm like, oh, they have a senior pastor. They have a deaconess. They have... You know, they have a full staff. What what do they need another pastor? And I'm like, well, maybe they got things figured out, you know? Because everybody needs a Warren shelf. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> so so it was like days, like maybe the week before call night, or it might even been the weekend, like the my vicarage congregation decided to call a different senior pastor. So that didn't open up the associate, associate. role. So that was, uh, that was out. And then I'm like, I don't know about this other youth thing. I've never heard from them, so I don't know. So there was there was an element of like uncertainty. You know, I was like, whatever, you know, wherever the Lord calls. Right. But you know, like that, that moment of like you're saying when they say your name and then where you're going, and you're like, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, 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 that's what it's it like, is. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. But it's that like, where is it going? Like, where, where's the next chapter of my life gonna mm-hmm. be? And it's just like, I just wonder what it would have been like to sit in the council presence, because I'm pretty sure it's that weekend before I saw it this is. past weekend, yeah. where they kind of meet with the seminary placement guys and mm-hmm. like kind of finalize and make sure that like Fort Wayne didn't have somebody from Fort Wayne slot to go to this church right. in St. Louis and be like, then how do they 
do they how do they fight? Do they throw darts? You know, yeah. that's always the jokes. Oh, they just throw darts to see where you're gonna end up. <laughs> but yeah. it is that, and like you know, that bundle of nerves. And I still remember. And this, I apologize. This might sound bad, but like I remember during the sermon on call service for that placement, one of like. I don't care what you're saying. I don't. <laughs> I just want to know where I'm I going. I just want to know. I just want to know. Yeah. I just come on. Let's let's speed it up let's here. Get it going. Let's, let's let's go. Yeah. And like, thankfully, like you know, like I said, I was like seventh, so like I got to hear my. And then this afternoon, it's like, okay, smooth sailing. Yeah. I remember one year, it wasn't my year to um, receive a vicarage or a call. I must have just attended just to see what the service was like, and like uh, the the guy goes, you know. Joe Smith, you know, somewhere, you know, Nowheresville, uh, you know, Iowa. And in the back of the church, you hear, where the blank is Nowheresville, Iowa? <laughs> I think it was the guy's spouse, his wife. And so we're like, ooh. You know, yeah, that like, is funny, the oohs and the ahs. Like, yeah. I remember at, it was Vicarage. Yeah. One of, like, my classmates was like, they're like, Joe Smith, something, something to church. Boca Raton, Florida. There was a lot of, ooh, for yeah, that one. I know, like, yeah, it's all like, the nice ooh, places. Boca Raton, that sounds kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. I think I think there was a vicarage out in California and one in Hawaii, I think. And when the Hawaii one goes, that we, everybody, oh, poor guy, you know, right. like. And so. then I think there's the Alaska ones if you're like, ooh, mm, kind yeah, of like you're, right. where is that? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, exciting times, and you know, uh, you know, the memories still, you know, come back and seem fresh for us. Uh, it was a special time of our lives, um, as you said earlier, starting a new chapter, right. not knowing how it's going to be scripted, but you, uh, you know, where you're going, and uh, then it's like, okay, what's the timing of it all, and and you know, how will this all work? How will I move? And and this getting and getting all that, like, where am I going to move to? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you didn't have that with Emmanuel yeah. or any of them, really. Yeah, I was I was blessed. Uh, the the time that we had to move, it was back to the house that we already owned. So, right. I mean, that's a whole nother story, right? And for me, it wasn't actually too terrible because Salem had a vicar that they kept, they had, and so then I kind of replaced the vicarage position mm. and the vicar that was there before me. He had like he was renting a house, Got so I just then moved into the house that he was renting and continued to rent it. Oh, okay. So that was a pretty smooth transition. That I was like, okay, because like, because I remember like after getting that call, like I said, hey, you know, in the next couple of weeks, because you know you have about a month or so before graduation, I'll come visit the church for a week, like on a Sunday, come out there worship, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know, then they showed me the house. I was like, you know what, this is fine. It's something. And so, yeah, so I had that, and then I remember, because since the vicarage ended in August time, like, well, you really can't start until he leaves. Mm-hmm. So then it was kind of like, okay, but we wanted to have you get involved a little bit, so would you mind coming down for VBS? Right. So I spent the week down there for VBS, stayed at one of the members' houses for the week, and got to kind of experience a little bit of the Salem life down there and their VBS and be unveiled that way. Yeah. I remember we had a class called field education and it was just, it was basically like a study hall where a prof would like pick a topic and, and present something and it you got no credit for it, but you had to be there. Okay. So like if you weren't out doing your field, field ed or uh, field work at your church or your vicarage, you had to be in field ed in a class. So we're going and uh, I can't remember if it was for vicarage or call day. And he's talking about like, okay, you, you know, if you're going to move, you have to see if your church will budget for you to move and like to get a, a rental truck. truck and all this. And I'll never forget this one guy. He goes, well, what do you do if you've never driven a rental truck? I mean, are there classes for you to learn how to drive a rental truck? And like, I don't know the first thing about it. And like, where do you go? And it's like, he was so serious and so nervous, you know, like everybody's kind of snickering and laughing like, come on, man. You know, he's like, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm afraid. You know, you see these big trucks and, and the, you know, the prof kind of, you know, smirked and said, hey, you know, somebody will help you. You know, <laughs> like, right. you know, a lot of times churches will provide that for you and you don't have to worry about driving the truck. Right. You know, yeah. Because I, I mean, I think when I moved to Salem. We got like a 26 foot U haul, mm-hmm. and my dad was able to drive that because for him, you know, he drove fire trucks all of his life, so driving a U haul wasn't a big deal. Right. Then moving up to Emmanuel, that was I know I whatever moving company load up everything, and 
you know, I think that was like a Monday they loaded up. I came up Monday with Madison, spent the night at my parents' house, or maybe two nights because I don't think it was till like Wednesday when my stuff was actually going to be delivered, mm. which is it's just funny how it's like sometimes it takes like a day or two to like yeah. get it to where it needs to go. It's like, it's a five-hour drive. I know, I know, yeah. It's something else. Yeah, for my, when we moved out to Fort Wayne, I rented a truck, a Penske truck with unlimited miles, and thank God my brother Dave, and then I, I absconded Sam. We did two trips in one day, back and forth, uh, loading the truck, unloading the truck, coming back, loading the truck, unloading the truck, coming back, and then we loaded the truck for the third one that I would do the next day. And uh, I uh, like some of the stories out of that. And it was like, you know, every trip in the beginning was very um, organized. And like, when we get to the end, we're just throwing things in there. And like, you know, it was just like, Oh man, the miles we put on in in twenty four hours of time, but Ugh. it was something. And uh, but yeah, I, I got a lot of miles on that unlimited truck. Got your money's <laughs> got worth. My money's worth, man. They weren't they weren't um, dinging me per mile. So, but yeah, and I still remember too. Like moving to Salem, like I must have been the last one to leave, and you know, mom, my grandma comes the next day to take care of the cat at mom and dad's house because mom and dad came down with me and my brothers too came and their families to see me get installed down in Salem. And when grandma came to the house, she's like, nobody shut the garage door. Mm. And so that had a bit on me and I was just like, and I think ever after that, I almost had the yips when it came to garage doors Mm. where when I was in Salem, I'd like leave my house like, did I shut my garage? Mm. And I'd like loop back around the the, where I lived to make sure the garage was shut. (laughs) I'm just like... I never once questioned, did I shut the garage? Yeah. But after that, it's like I got the yips of like, mm-hmm. did I shut it? Questioning yourself. Questioning myself. Yeah. And yeah. like, I mean, I've done that a few times since being up at Emmanuel. Yeah. And loop back around the, my street and just like, mm-hmm. did I do that? Oh, I mean, all man. these little things that go into it. There's a lot of moving parts, like organizing like the installations. Yes. Yeah. Writing your service, getting your guest speakers, inviting any special pastors to come, you know. Right, because, yeah, because I know, I don't know if we've ever, like, I think individually we've talked with each other, but, like, you know, my ordination at St. Matthew, my home congregation here in Barrington, you know, that was nice, and, you know, it was a little bit different, kind of like even my installation here at Emmanuel, like, since it was during a regular church service, mm-hmm. not many pastors can come when you have it during a regular exactly. church service. Right. So I think for the laying on the hands of a lot of the elders of St. Matthew, and then Nick, who was actually a couple years older than me, but was a son of the congregation of St. Matthew and graduate seminary with me. Mm-hmm. So then when they put the stole on me, it was Nick that put the stole on me. Oh, cool. And then he got ordained the following weekend at St. Matthew, so then I put the stole on him. Because mm-hmm. it was one of those, oh, like... Oh, that's cool. Because not often, I don't think, that a church has two sons of the congregation Yeah, getting especially gradu- that close. ...graduating the same year. Yeah, right, yeah. And then, you know, then down at the installation, Salem, you know, had some of the local pastors from our circuit and... Even one guy that was from SID, Southern Illinois District, because they were closer to us than most of the CID churches. Mm -hmm. And then Pastor Shaw came down. Oh, very cool. So that was nice of him to come down for that service. Yeah. Yeah, I had uh, my supervisory pastor, uh, Reverend Kanicki, he was our guest preacher. And then um, Mark Neubacher, he was uh, one of the associates there who did a lot of um, visitation with me. He came, so... Yeah, it was kind of neat, you know, to have those special people who are a part of the journey. Right. The only thing I don't care for for the installation ordination is sitting in that chair in the center. Yeah, you're the center of attention, and you're, yeah. You're just, the only good thing is they don't make you face the congregation. True. At least you're facing the altar. But, like, I always think of, like, my installation here at Emmanuel. Yeah. Like, it was so awkward during communion because mm-hmm. I'm just sitting right yeah, in the I center know, of the aisle. Everybody walking, walking by, by me for a communion. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, I don't know any of these people. <laughs> and like, they're just coming right by the side of me because I yeah. think we we're doing the drive through communion probably because it was at the 915. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, this is so awkward. All these people just walking right by me. I'm just yeah. sitting in the center here. <laughs> I'm just like, ah. Yeah. That's <laughs> funny. But yeah, oh, that's, well. that's that awkward seat that you got to sit in. Yep. I mean, yep. some of us sit in that when they get installed in a position here. <laughs> Others just sit in the pew with their family. Uh, well, uh, when I got ordained, I sat in that chair. I'm like, I don't need to sit in that chair again. Oh, I think you did, brother. No, no, no. 
Well, hey, uh, we wish all God's blessings to those who are getting vicarage assignments and uh, their first calls uh, out of uh, Concordia uh, Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne and at... Concordia Seminary St. Louis. Yeah, so exciting times. The Lord's blessings to you all, and thanks, everybody, for listening. (laughs) 